We have mm -hmm. a moment. Uh, adherence uh, or adherence uh, to the law, as you say. But uh, when we talk about adherence, we've had people who we can call political prophets that uh, even we've uh, brought into this country, one of, of whom is uh, Krigler. And uh, since Krigler, uh, Krigler made his pronouncement and gave his report, it seems all these items that were, of course, uh, you know, teased out from his report, they've not been in any way adhered to. They've not been implemented at all. We're in this morass because we always come up with commissions, we always come up with uh, you know, tax forces, we, we call foreigners, and they come up with very good recommendations and solutions for the country that will bring sobriety, especially into the electoral system itself. Mm, yeah. Had we followed what Krigler had actually given out, even with the uh, use of technology, uh, use even the constitution of IBC itself, I think that was really uh, teased out from Krigler, uh, if you just f read fully, what is in that particular report. Why are we always in a vicious cycle, yet there is a solution in the middle? It reminds me of uh, uh, a scientist called uh, Fabian, I forget his other name, who came up with uh, the idea of the uh, processional caterpillars. Remember the processional mm -hmm. caterpillars that, uh, you know, they were going in circle following one another on the barrel of, uh, on actually the, the, the top that's a cyclic top of the cover of a container. You were going in cycle, in circles and circle, dropping one by one dead. Yet, there was food in the middle. This is what is happening in this country. We have already uh, solutions for IBC in the middle. But we keep falling off like this procession of caterpillars every year, year in, year out. And yet, no one will take that particular Anxious, that particular motivation to move forward and implement these things. Why are we here? And Krigler told us we shouldn't be. Well, uh, I just want to agree with uh, Dr. Martin Olo that the um, underlying issue is political bad manners. Mm -hmm. That uh, we always know the solution to the problem, mm -hmm. but we choose the lazy option of not implementing it because we feel by implementation it will be very hard to fix the things that we want to fix in the process and therefore we need as a people to rise above the fray and decide whether we want some of these issues for Kenya. I will only disagree with the, the good uh, doctor that at times when somebody dies we do what we call post-mortem. And that post-mortem is not to save the person who has died, but post-mortem is to assist us understand the cause of his death so that we save those who are alive, such that if it knew that there was foul play or if he died of certain disease, then we, we address the, 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 the real cause of the problem instead of just uh, massaging the issues as they were. When we talk of an audit of the 2010 constitution, an audit of election process, we want to do a forensic audit to come out with some of the areas. Because even up to now, if Kenyans were to be asked and if they were to be genuine, nobody knows who won the election. And that's what Krikula said, that both sides were stealing and therefore the winner was not clear. But to either side, they knew their candidate had won. Uh, the ODM team, the new Rayleigh had won, the PNU team, uh, the, the, the new Kibaki won. And the answer lies between here and there. And this past election has the same, same problem. Now, uh, to, to be fair to politicians, you know politicians are a product of our society. The way politicians behave is the way the voters also behave. Because at times voters choose to listen to the story of their leader and ignore any other story. Mm -hmm. Today the country is properly polarized. Those who believe in Raila, they believe Raila is right. Those who voted for the current regime, they believe the president and the team are right. And that's why you see a lot of bitterness 
uh, emanating particularly from the two majority leaders. In that press conference, you would have expected that they would be saying, okay, the other side gave them members. Apart from the issues they want, we want also to put these things on the table. Remember, the president had written to parliament to suggest certain amendments uh, to the constitution to provide for the office of the official leader of the opposition. I would have expected this is a chance to discuss a raft of issues. We've been talking about uh, those who supported BBI and those who did not support. The president has gone halfway mm -hmm. in implementing the BBI. Can we make it a constitutional requirement so that when he, he picks a request for 23 CAS, then he picks 50. Again, it's a very, very suggestion he had been given that, okay, 23 would be reasonable. Can we make it a constitutional issue? The way the cabinet is done, that uh, you do not exceed a certain number. So these are a number of issues that uh, we look at. And uh, f for me, uh, I, I, I may not be informed in, in issues of law, but I'm sufficiently informed in issues of politics in the sense that some of the amendments can be made and frozen. You freeze them so that William Ruta does not see as if it will give opportunity to Raila up to 2032. Then we, we roll out that particular uh, aspect of the, of the amendments that we require so that we, we, we are able to play with, with the current situation, but we know 2032 is a period where some of the critical players of now may not be in contention. Say so that we give to ourselves a good constitution. Uh, remember, the old constitution, the Lancaster product, was amended almost every year. There was an amendment from 63, starting with 1964, the amendment to block any member of parliament from crossing the floor uh, without going for a by-election. Uh, because initially it was provided that you could cross the way now you find some Jubilee members they are effectively crossed to Kenya Kwanzaa and that amendment was followed by another one even including the president must be above 35 to block Tomboya or, or, or perceived uh, influence of Tomboya such that by the time we were getting this 2010 constitution we had been doing amendments one after the other that's why I'm saying it makes a lot of political sense for us to do an audit of this constitution. Then we create what are the immediate issues we can do with it, what are the mid-term and what are the long-term issues that we can do that people don't feel this thing is going to fix me. This is the way, uh, the way I look at it. And if there is any, any behavior change, it must start with those who call themselves they are the, 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 they are the ruling administrators, they are the administrators of this country. Why do I say that? If you are to do from the 2nd of April and you do an audit on what Raila said, what the president said, you realize that apart from that Sunday, a lot of bad behavior has emanated from the administration of the day. And therefore, what Azmir is doing is to react. Mm -hmm. We are also political players. They cannot tell us not to address the people, and yet they are addressing every day, every church function is a political rally. Whether it's the one in uh, Sorongai in, in, in Western, the 40 churches, everything was about Raila. Whether it is uh, all these other, the so-called church services. So my, my worry is that um, there is a lot of pretense, and at times people blame everything on Raila. Even if Raila was not there, the problems that you are seeing they would, they, they would be there. The fact that um, uh, we are dealing with an administration that is very dishonest and uh, it, it's, it's not because Raila is in town. It is because of the behavior of those in power. Still, I wanted to follow up with the question of uh, the, by the, the talks happening on the other side and demonstrations happening on the other side. How will that really pan out uh, and not really affect the entire conversation that you are seeking to achieve? You know, uh, demonstrations, town hall meetings, they are just like church services that you go and you substitute Jesus with Raila's name. 
it is like uh, the, the launching of projects that were launched before. And you're launching projects knowing that there is no money in the coffers. 60% of the money that we collect will go to the debt. And we are collecting at lower than we expected last year. I remember in, in, in I think, September, I think we raised the highest, about 100 and, uh, over 165 billion. But the collections have been under 40, at times 40%, at times uh, 50%, which means by the end of June, we'll have collected less than the, 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 the budgeted provisions uh, for, the, for the new financial year. And therefore, this launching of these projects is either a gimmick or it is a way of trying, uh, and even the, the truce that the president seemed to have indicated was either meant for him also to get a chance to go to the field so that they are squared it with Raila. So if they want to talk about, uh, to, to have negotiations, they should cease making Raila the subject of every church service. That will be able to accept. And remember, Dibal, this issue started by them the first day poaching 26 members of parliament from the other side because we started by Raila winning 27 counties and Ruta winning 20 in terms of outright win for, for, for the presidential candidate. Uh, Raila won 177 constituencies. Ruta won, I think, 161. But now the thing is upside down. They have been poaching from Jubilee, from UDM, well, from all these parties that were initially in Azimio's side. Why? What is the urgency? Is there anything that they want to do? A master plan to amend the constitution and uh, allow the current leader to be president in perpetuity? These are some of the critical issues. And when a dictator is in town, he doesn't have to talk. You will see from the way he behaves. That's why uh, what Suba was saying earlier on, the demeanor of the president that second of, uh, of, of April was the best he could have displayed after being declared the winner and Supreme Court affirming the position. But immediately after that, he, wa he was rubbishing Raila, calling him Mukanga, Muchawi, the other fellow. You know, at times, uh, even if for nothing else, politicians, any competition will create enemies. But at times it's good to have some respect. Thank and you. When, you are, when you win and you are the younger brother like uh, Churchill, if he wins against me, he becomes the father figure of this table, even you. But if, if you, you, you cease to be the father figure by accommodating those who have lost against you, then you are inviting them to the arena. And we were invited to the arena. All right, let's hear from uh, Dr. Martin. What do you decipher from this 